David Ornstein. David, plenty to get through. We're going to begin, though, with news that has just started to break in the last hour or two, that this Chelsea takeover led by Todd Bowley may be in danger. Fill us in. Yeah, Rebecca, I'll start by being clear for our audiences and especially Chelsea fans that there is no issue around the buying consortium. The Todd Bowley-led group have no problem at all here. They are continuing with their process and waiting for approval to go ahead with this takeover. They are the preferred bidder. Todd Bowley, I understand, has been at Chelsea's training ground pretty much every day and in and around the stadium. That part is fine. What is a bit of an issue, and this is a real thing we need to pay attention to is that the government of Britain who need to decide that this takeover can go through are unclear where the proceeds of the sale, 2.6 billion pounds, are going to. They say that that money needs to go to a frozen bank account which they are satisfied with. And then, when the time is right, it will go to victims of the war in Ukraine. Roman Abramovich, who of course owns Chelsea and is currently sanctioned by the British government, says that that money needs to go to a company which is involved in the ownership of Chelsea. The government is not satisfied that that company is independent of links to Roman Abramovich and his family, and they are not happy with that. Now, we've spoken to people around Chelsea and Mr Abramovich who deny this government concern and they say the money is going to go to a charitable cause, as they've said all along, but there is clearly consternation within government. That needs to be resolved as soon as possible because Chelsea are operating under a licence that expires on the 31st of May and after that, the Premier League in early June will decide and give licences to the clubs to play in the Premier League next season. This needs to be sorted imminently. And as I said on NBC previously, this is an existential threat to Chelsea. They'll hope it's resolved. Wow, a little hiccup. OK, for Chelsea fans, let's not hope it's too big. Manchester United, we know, have a new manager. We thought starting this summer, but no. Am I right, David? <laughs> Eric Ten Hag has terminated his contract with Ajax following the end of their domestic season. They won the Dutch league title again. And they're going away on a postseason break, a celebration. He is not going with them. He is going to be starting work with Manchester United. Now, there were reports that he will be in Manchester from today. They are inaccurate. Uh, he may be in the UK this week, but he's not going to be in Manchester because there's still one week to go in the Premier League season. Ralph Ranić will be in charge, like he has been for a number of months now on an interim basis, finishing with Manchester United's match at Crystal Palace on Sunday. Then Eric Ten Hag will take over formally and he will come to Manchester and get on with work. Now, the work that he is getting on with is largely around backroom staff. We've talked about that before with Mitchell uh, van der Haag being his main assistant, maybe Steve McLaren too, and a couple of others who may stay at Manchester United and others who may come in. And then transfers, crucially, as well. Manchester United, I imagine, will make three or four transfers this summer. Don't believe all of the hundreds of names you read across the media. And I think they would like to get one in sooner rather than later. But these things take time, a few weeks, and nothing is close just yet. But they do want to sign Frankie de Jong from Barcelona. He is on Eric Ten Hag's list. But it's not that easy, Rebecca. You need agreement from Barcelona. You need agreement from Frankie de Jong. Conversations are taking place, but not formal talks yet. And nothing is set in stone. And then they will work on other positions as well. It's a time of huge change at Manchester United. We've detailed it throughout here on NBC. But finally soon we're going to see Eric Ten Hag. I would imagine you'll see him on your television screens next week. Uh, and he's just putting the uh, first building blocks in place behind the scenes just this week now. The biggest summer, you'd have to say, for United in probably a decade. Now let's talk title race, something United wish they were involved in. With City dropping points at West Ham at the weekend, it did open a door, didn't it, for Liverpool to go really at this title race now to try and get that quadruple. And so they're bringing somebody back to Anfield to help with the cause. Explain more. They are indeed, Rebecca. Do not underestimate the importance Liverpool are placing on the next fortnight in the Premier League, but also the Champions League final on May the 28th. And understandably, they have some physical concerns. It's taken its toll this season. Currently, we see star names like Mo Salah, Virgil van Dijk and Fabinho out. Now, Liverpool's medical team, this is to take nothing away from them at all. It's not a slight on them. But Jurgen Klopp has wanted to bring 
somebody who was with the club previously between 2017 and 2020, which was a successful period. Two Champions League finals, one of them was victorious uh, against Tottenham and, of course, the Premier League title in 2020. Um, his name is Christopher Roerbeck. He's a physiotherapist. He was extremely popular with the players and he worked very closely, in particular with Mo Salah and Virgil van Dijk. Now, he went back to his native Germany to be with his family, but now Liverpool have managed to um, hold some talks with him and get to the verge of an agreement for him to come back in immediately. Nothing to do with next season just yet. It's now. And Liverpool want him to come in and work with uh, their players and try and get them in the best possible physical condition for this crucial run into the end of the season. So it's a bit of an unusual step, but Liverpool made a move in the January transfer window with Luis Diaz coming in. And now they're bolstering their backroom staff too. Uh, it's close to being done. And it would be typical of Liverpool, wouldn't it? Just to cover every base as they try to be the best. Indeed, anything they can do to try and make history. Our thanks to David Ornstein. Brilliant insight as ever. Well Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7am Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.